So two weeks ago, this picture made my day. A friend of mine, Piotr, on, and his colleague, Tomasz, they're both programmers, and as you can see, they're white dudes holding a sign that says, the world will be better when IT becomes less boring than this. And they tweeted this with a hashtag donate because to animate people to, well, donate, because, uh, donate towards Reyes Got Some of Code to help us get more women into open source. And in the next minutes, I'm going to tell you why I love this image so much. I wanted to retweet it a hundred times, um, why they are right, and how we can make a community that actually looks a bit like this to a community that looks like that. Magic. So, hi, I'm Annika. I'm really excited to be here. And I'm going to share with you the magic trick on how to fix your community in one day. So, I'm going to talk about what diversity is, what it brings us, why we need it, and how we can achieve this. Because diversity is achievable. To understand what's going on, we need to take a look at the field of technology, technology and engineering in general, where we will find related issues and roots of the problems we are faced with in our communities. Our world is as diverse as some tech teams can only wish for. We are surrounded by different age groups, different genders, cultural and religious backgrounds, ethnicity, job level, bodies and abilities, sexual preferences, etc. For this talk, I'm mostly going to focus on gender, and because I'm an expert at that, I'm mostly going to focus on women. But for a second, let's see what diversity actually would look like. It's not one pink bubble in a lot of blue ones, or the other way around. It's when you can't see what the dominating group is anymore, since there is none. And also, not everybody just fits into one category, but actually belongs to many. Did you know that only 10% of the world population are white and male? But most of the people creating the software we use every day all over the world are white and male. So if we have non-diverse teams, it's because of a social imbalance. We solve the problems that we see. And people from the same background in a team will come up with the same ideas and same solutions. On the other hand, diverse teams, so teams with people from different backgrounds and different experiences, are more creative, innovative, and more productive than a non-diverse team, which has been shown by a huge number of studies. That actually means that diversity is a key ingredient to growing a strong community or a strong business that's built to last. And even financially, it shows that companies that include many women in senior positions, they show better financial results than companies with fewer, actually no women in senior positions. A diverse team can also capture a greater share of the consumer market because studies have shown that teams with people from different backgrounds can, of course, more effectively market to consumers from different backgrounds. And a good example for this is the closed captioning feature on YouTube, which was a huge win for Google and had a big impact on the consumer market. So, the story is that when the internet was invented, it was awesome for deaf people, because it was all in writing, and they could understand everything. But then, videos kept turning up, and they couldn't understand them anymore, and they were left out. So, the deaf engineer, Ken Herrenstein, developed and pushed forward the release of the closed captioning feature for Google Videos, which was then later added to YouTube. It's this little sign that you can click on and off, and then the subtitles or the closed captioning come up. So this feature actually, it had a huge business impact beyond the community of the deaf and well beyond what was anticipated. So now people from all over the world 
can make their videos accessible to a super huge audience and users can understand videos that are not in their mother tongue, only thanks to this feature. So the world, including the deaf community, can connect even better. And Google has proved its importance on the market once more. A great example, or actually a sad one, is Apple's health kit, which is also included in the Apple Watch. They say you can monitor all the metrics that you're most interested in. Well, you can monitor everything up to your sodium intake, just not your periods, something that women have been tracking for centuries, and that is one of the health-related issues women are concerned with every day. On top of that, last week the news came out that people with dark skin or tattoos may have problems with the watch. The light sensors the watch uses to measure the pulse, etc., they may that, that actually may not work correctly for these people. That's like an absolute fail and such a miss out on Abel's side. But actually, I really couldn't believe it myself that it's so obvious. But since this is the Apple team that tested the watch, so yes, if there are problems dark-skinned people could have with the watch, they for sure couldn't have noticed. So yes, it could have been a great product with even more satisfied customers. And these fails happen when teams are not diverse. And they are not diverse because of social injustice. It's how Lena Reinhardt said, diversity is the default. If it's not diverse, it's broken. So if a community is not diverse, it's broken. But let me show you. I didn't know how to move forward. Things piled on over the years. There was a lot I had to put up with in the culture of tech. It just didn't seem worth it. That's Garen Means. She quit her job of being a programmer after 15 years. So what's happening? She is not the only one. Women are leaving the industry. But let's look at this closer. If we look at the path people usually take in entering tech, we can actually imagine a kind of pipeline. And people usually get in and they get around, they enter university, they study, they get a job, get promoted, etc. But a study from last year found that half the women entering the field will at some point leave, 50%. So we have actually holes in our pipeline, so at this point we are filling a damaged pipeline, which is super frustrating. So why? Why does it leak? Why do women leave? They leave because of hostile work environment, they're feeling isolated, we have a lack of career paths for them, they're often overlooked in promotions, and there's a lack of role models for them. The other thing is that we don't even have many women in the field of tech. So around 50% of the jobs there are all over the world is actually quite equal. So 50% of those jobs women hold. But there are only 20% in tech. And in open source, it's much worse. It's only 11%. So this is our problem. Out of the few women that are making it into tech, Half of them are leaving. One of the barriers that keep women from entering the field easily or actually making it to the top is that the bar is set so much higher for women and minorities. Research has found in blind studies that women's work has to be 2.5 times as good as men's to be considered equally. And this is because of unconscious bias and stereotypes we have. We love the idea that we can perceive something by looking at it and seeing the truth. But our truth is actually shaped by biases and stereotypes. There's this Harvard experiment, it's called Implicit. You can do it online, it's a test on bias. And you can find it in the linked list with my slides on speaker deck. So this this test found that everybody has bias. For example, 70 to 80% have bias against women in tech, 
even women in tech have these biases, or they're preferring white, white to African American, or younger people. But almost nobody reports those biases, so this means everybody has them, but nobody thinks they do. Stereotypes. We learn them through cultural messages or portrayals in the media, comments from friends and family, and it's really not easy to get rid of them. But we can do it. And one step is how we treat kids. So this is actually me and my little brother, and I can't stress enough how important we are as role models and what opportunities we give our kids. We should let kids discover the world without treating them differently just because of their gender. Kids are natural adventurers. We should let them live in our wonderful world without constraining them to role-specific behavior that changes every other century. We should let them be kids, not girls or boys. So to summarize, a diverse team is not only a representation of our world and socially fair, it makes your team more productive, more creative and innovative, creates an atmosphere where everybody feels more comfortable. It actually makes people stay longer in their jobs, gets you better financial results, and a greater market share. So in three words, diversity is awesome. And achievable. So great. Let's see what we can do to get it. So when we look at some open source projects, I think everybody agrees that we will see that the commenting culture on some projects is really unhealthy. So either we have dismissive maintainers or hostile comments from users that are feeling entitled to bug fixes or features, and both sides do have a problem. So if we as a maintainer are dismissive about contribution and especially about newcomers, we set the tone with that and are creating an unwelcoming exclusive culture around our project. Or if we as users don't acknowledge that the maintainer just usually does this project in his or her own free time, there's no big company behind it. This actually can result into draining all the fun and energy out of the maintainer, who then more often than not has to abandon, the, uh, abandon their project because they're actually burned out. There are ways, of course, to start improving that. For example, putting a code of conduct on your site or your readme so that everybody knows that abusive, sexist, racist, and discriminating comments are not welcome and that there will be consequences. So broken down to one sentence, I think it's about having empathy for each other and putting ourselves in somebody else's shoes. It's about learning how to give good feedback and how to receive it. It's about creating a good documentation around your project and treating others with respect. We have to remember that there's always a human being behind the code. This actually applies for our online lives as well as our offline ones. So it's, it's, it's important to address diversity and inclusiveness on each and every level on our personal life and our work life. If it's at a work meeting, or at a dinner with your family, or at a conference after party. So, here are three steps we actually can take. First, it's always good to start with yourself. So, I really, really recommend taking the Harvard test and seeing that you do have bias, accept it, and make your unconscious bias conscious. That helps you to counteract them. It also means to question traditional beliefs and always ask, why are we doing it this way? This helps to dismantle hidden biases and procedures that may produce barriers for women. We can fix some of the leaks in our broken pipeline by recognizing women's work. That means make sure that Women's voices are being heard and push them forward. Show that you actually believe in them. Be a mentor for somebody and share your expertise. It's, of course, as key as for men to support women. It's as important for women to do the same. We should connect to others and reach out. We, I can make myself visible. 
I can get off my couch more often and go to user groups or conferences. I can take part, I can make myself visible in attending. So we should try to be the role model we wished we would have, we would have had when we entered tech. And I'm not saying this is super easy, it's hard and sometimes it's horrible, but if others are supportive, it's much easier. And take a friend if you don't want to go alone, that's always what I do. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> and support others. If it's with a tiny email saying, hey, I really love what you're doing, or backing somebody up in a meeting, or pushing her to give a talk on a scary big stage. So we can reach for the stars, but we need each other for that. We can't do it alone. We need support from our colleagues, from our family and friends. We can be each other's support. That's all. People of all gender cause disruption and break stereotypes. Because studies have shown that we perform worse if we hear that we are not good at what we do just before we're doing it. So we should stop telling women that they can't do math and we should stop telling men that they can't take care of their kids. We have to break those stereotypes that are holding us back. Words are powerful. We should use ours wisely. And to show you a case study that implemented all this, I will show you how we build Rails Customer of Code. Rails Customer of Code is a, is a three month scholarship program that enables women to work full time on, or, or on an open source project. And actually, in every language, not just Ruby. So, Rails Customer of Code started as a kind of wild dream of some Rails Girls Berlin coaches and organizers. They wanted to give the Rails Girls students a perspective because after after the beginner's workshop and then falling in love with programming, the students are encouraged to start their own study group and keep on learning. And with the Summer of Code, they actually could keep on learning towards a goal. So the Summer of Code actually took the Rails Girls movement to the next level in connecting all the good things that are happening in the Rails Girls community and keeping the momentum going and companies involved in open source. The concept is that we always have two students pair up because two is always better than one. They will find coaches, they will choose a project. This year, for example, I think we had 36 projects from open source maintainers where they could choose from, and then they will apply for the scholarship, which is full time and for three months. So last year, 162 women applied from all over the world and from they were coming from super different fields. We had movie directors and photographers. They studied human computer interaction and French philology or worked in marketing. But they all shared the same summer. They were all coding on open source projects. And this initiative is supported by wonderful companies such as GitHub and Travis CI, who are partners. And together with them and other really, really cool sponsors and many, many awesome human beings, Remember Piotr and Thomas? They actually helped us fund more money with this. So there are many amazing people out there who donated out of their own pocket and spread the word. And in the last two years, we could actually sponsor 10 teams each year. This year, we raised even more money, actually 120,000 US dollars, which means that for the first time ever, and nobody knows this yet. You will be the first one to know. We haven't made this official. So for the first time ever, we can actually fund 16 teams, which is super crazy awesome, by the way. And actually, in a couple of hours, we will be sending out the acceptance letters for this year's teams, so it's really exciting times. So our program not only has sponsored teams, but also volunteering ones who didn't get a sponsored seat, but say they want to contribute no matter what, which is really inspiring. So all in all, we had 32 teams, that's 64 women in two years, who worked on many different projects such as these. 
we had over the last two years. And I have to say, my favorite one is Speakerinnen. Has somebody heard of this before? Yes. Um, okay, so it's a tiny project. It's a hands-on fix, actually, to the problem of few women speaking at conferences or meetups. It's a database where women can make themselves visible in signing up with their, bi with their biography and with the topics they can talk about. So organizers can actually find their future speakers or moderators for their conferences and events. And as we saw, not a lot of people know about this, but already there are over 700 women in this database. So we could fill this room twice, actually. And my favorite part is that it's been built by a Rails Girls Study Group in Berlin. And because they met on Mondays, they called themselves Ruby Monday Study Group. Ruby Monsters. And Sven Fuchs, a colleague of mine, he started the group in 2012. And the group actually kept on learning after the first World Girls workshop and built Speakerinnen actually while learning how to code. And two of the Ruby Monsters, Anja and Carla, who were directing movies and working in journalism before, they made it into the first edition of Race Girls of Code. They contributed to Sinatra, and they spoke about their summer at a conference in Kiev, as many other teams did. And with this, they helped to spread the word and the spark of Race Girls of Code. And they are now both colleagues of mine and are working at Travis CI as developers. They also submitted Speakerinnen again for one, of the, for, for one of the open source projects this year and are mentoring the students during the summer, which is where actually their story took on speed. So this is such a dream story that I will never tire of telling it because it shows us Rails Girls and Rails Summer of Code made possible. But wait for it, it gets even better. Because Carla came up to me one day because she wanted to write a blog post about Rails Girls Summer of Code and she asked me, what the alumni were doing, actually, from the last two years, and if we had any statistics, which we hadn't. So we sent out an email asking all the alumni what they did now, and we found that over 90% of our alumni are now working in tech. And 8% of them even founded their startups with this, which is, like, huge, and shows once more how important those initiatives like Race Girls of Code are, and how big of an impact we are actually having. So, Anya and Carla are two of all these alumni, and they are now all giving back to the program that changed their lives. They are highly visible role models for others to follow suit. So, to summarize, with Race Girls of Code, we are introducing newcomers from different backgrounds to the open source scene. We are increasing the newcomer friendliness of the communication around the projects. We're helping to fix some of the leaks in our pipeline by creating supportive environments for women, for boosting their careers. And we even get more women into the pipeline and help diversify the projects and, for example, companies like Travis CI. So all in all, we created a hands-on solution for the lack of women problem we have in tech communities and motivate women to start their journey and share it. So my journey actually started three years ago. I joined a Rise Girls workshop and to just see what this programming was about, and I was blown away. The workshop was buzzing with, I think, 70 enthusiastic women, and I was falling in love with Ruby on Rails right on the spot. And afterwards, I started Rails Girls Berlin with a friend, which, um, which, which grew like crazy in the community around, and then Sven started his study groups and others followed in Berlin and all over the world. And now we have this international movement that is Rails Girls and Summer of Code, which is actually changing the future of open source. And it all, it all comes down to one thing. The magic trick is you. Initiatives like Rails Girls Summer of Code are only possible because so many people are putting in some hours of their lives and are coaching and organizing or mentoring. It needs people giving their time and shows what can actually happen if they do. So let's remove all the barriers for women in open source and tech. Let's build thriving communities and put in our love and support to make some change. 
Because this is our community. This is our responsibility. And in the end, it's really not about statistics or, or diversity as a selling factor. In the end, we are talking about social justice and building the world we want to live in and we want our kids to live in. And the good news is that, that change is possible and it only takes us one day. Actually, it only takes us a couple of hours. A study group, a workshop, a change of mind and heart. It's one first step. And everybody can do it. We are all in this together. So let's begin to build better communities and a better future together. Let's actually not waste another second and start with it today. Thank you.